Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a dash cam into a 2021 Kia Stonic. Now, this particular vehicle, we're going to wire it to the fuse box so it goes on and off with the ignition and it's fully plug and play. So in other words, you can pull it out if the car's a lease or you're taking it back or changing your car with no damage to the vehicle at all. First things first, you're going to need to get yourself a wiring kit that's compatible with your dash cam. Got one here. We'll have a look at the contents of it. Here's what, you, what we have in that kit. There's a replacement power cable with a mini USB just there, look, to plug into the camera. On the other end of it, you have a earth connection we're going to put behind a chassis bolt and a power feed with a bullet connector on it. Now, you're going to get these fuse spurs with these kits, or if you buy a kit that's got them, hopefully. And you've got different sizes. You've got normal, you've got micro, you've got mini US, uh, sorry, mini spur. Uh, you've got all sorts of different ones, yeah, depending which one fits your particular vehicle we're going to use. So it definitely won't be the large one. These are normally used on old commercials and some Mercedes still. What we're going to do now though is grab this. This is a ferrite filter and it's to suppress DAB radio interference. It's on a hinge and it's got some little clips. So what we could do is clip it open, it folds open and we're going to put it, basically wrap the power cable around it near the camera. So we're going to put it through, wrap it around the back, put it through again and then snap it shut. And then we're going to tuck the power cable up above the window screen above the headlining. On this vehicle, your fuse box is located here. Let's pull the panel off. There you go, there's your fuses. Let's get on with tucking this up above the headlining. Okay, when you get to this point here on your headlining, so you've took your cable all the way along and then you basically grabbed here, yeah, pull the rubber seal off all the way up until you get to there. You've got an airbag there, look. Pop your fingers behind it, pop the cable behind the airbag and then down the side. It's quite loose, look, you can easily move it until you get to corner of the dashboard right here. We're gonna pop this end panel off as well. When you're popping off this end panel, it's best to use a plastic leverage tool. Don't use a screwdriver, you'll put big dints in your dashboard, look a right mess. These are about a pound from eBay, Amazon, or most car shops. You just sort of pop them in and lever them out and you've got clips, look all the way around it like so lever it until it basically just comes away completely and remove it with that removed it gives you access to a 12 millimeter bolt which can undo that to use as our earthing point put the earth cable behind it there's the earth connection we've got the bolt i'll put a nice ring terminal on the end just so it's a bit more secure and a washer behind that as well we're now going to bolt that back in and you've got a real nice solid earth there what we're going to do now is use a multimeter or maybe one of them test probe screwdrivers that lights up when you touch a circuit and we're going to basically test for an ignition switch fuse an accessory one so nothing to do with ecu or abs braking or anything like that now on this particular vehicle i touch that there no voltage with the ignition off and if we look at the little diagram it's basically an accessory circuit, a power outlet, yeah? So it's very useful. If we turn the ignition on, test it again. There, 12 volts. So that is an ignition switch fuse that we can use for our power socket. We're gonna turn the ignition off and take that fuse out. And it's a micro blade fuse. So we're going to get our micro blade fuse spur and we're going to pop the fuse we've just taken out into that there. So what we've got now is the original 20 amp that we pulled out the fuse box and a 2 or a 3 amp to run the camera that's basically piggybacking off the socket. So all it does is basically double up one socket to two to run the device. We can now plug this back in. Like so. Pay attention to the orientation of the fuse, it is important. And now is a good time to test your camera before you bundle all this cable up and tidy it up and make all good. Moment of truth, let's pop the ignition on. And there we go, powering up nicely. Turn the ignition off and back off again. And there you go guys, you have successfully fitted your dash cam to one of these Kia vehicles. Like I say, fully, you know, removable. If you do trade the car on or whatever, you can take it out without any damage to the vehicle. Any questions, contact your camera retailer that you bought it from. Thanks a lot for watching and bye for now.